Today we're talking about uh, your internal, what's the I'm talking about today? Oh, internal GPS. God as a present spirit. That actually came from this wonderful man's interpretation of that. God as an ever-present spiritual friend, a guide to give us guidance when we need it, in the moment that we need it. I am directionally dyslexic. Is anybody else directionally dyslexic? I don't know north from south, from east to west. I never have, I never did, I never will. It's not getting better as I get older. I just have no sense of any kind of inner compass about where I am, north, south, east, or west. However, Maureen knows where she is all the time. She has an internal GPS system. We can be in a town, n never been there before, four hours later she knows where everything is. She just has that inner sense. I, I, I do not. So when she's not around, I'm lost, except for my smartphone. <laughs> my smartphone, mine being uh, an iPhone, has Maureen right here for me. Her name is Siri. She's right there. And I always have her on when Maureen's not there. She's telling me what to do. Which road to go? Go right, go left, stop, no, turn around, go backwards. She's always there for me. What we need to develop is a GPS for the mind, which connects us to spirit, to God, to the present moment, when we are connected to a wisdom much higher than our own, a, a presence and power that has a perspective globally, looks down and sees us in our little life getting all caught up in our stuff and gives us recalculation so we can get back on the path to wholesome states of mind of oneness of completeness it's there for us it's it's wonderful I love having that available to me and you know what she has no attitude with me either if I don't <laughs> listen to her she just says recalculating recalculating and she, you know, if I decide to go over this way because there's a construction site on that street she just goes recalculating recalculating if I choose to go my own way, which I never do, because it's not right. If I ever do, she doesn't say to me, hello, idiot, I told you which way to go. She never does that. She just gently recalculates and guides me on another way, one that will get me where I want to go. And you know we're all headed, don't you? Yeah. To the icon that says home, the one that brings you home. You're going home to who it is that you truly, not yet on that please, shut it off. Oh, thank you. Uh, we, we, we are going home to who we truly are. This is what we're doing. We're coming back to our true self over and over and over again. That's what all of us are doing here. That's what we're here for. Every practice, every Course in Miracles lesson, every class that we take is all about opening ourselves up to our inner guidance. And it comes in many different ways for different people. For some people, the inner guidance can be in a voice. People hear a voice whispering, speaking to them. For some people, it's more of a feeling tone. For other people, it's just a kind of knowing in your body when you're doing the right thing and when you're not. You sort of feel it in your body. I'm about to go down on a road that leads to nowhere. And it gives us that, that warning, 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 turn left, turn left. No, you're not going to turn left. Recalculate. Oh, you're going to keep going? I told you to go this way. No, it doesn't do that. It just gives you gentle nudges about going in the right direction. And, and, and usually it comes in forms when I'm feeling confused or angry or agitated. That's when my GPS device is most available to me, but I'm most likely not to listen to it. Anybody relate to that? No. So we're having breakfast. It's just Wednesday morning. Maureen's on fried eggs and grits, and I'm doing toast. I'm on toast and Maureen is fried eggs and grits. So I'm, I'm getting ready for the toast to pop up and ask the toast up yet. She goes, you know, you're using a lot of cream cheese. Use less cream cheese this morning because I'm going to use it all up. And for some reason, that really ticked me off. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, huh? And I, I didn't say all these things to her, but I immediately got off track. I, I cut myself off from my GPS. I didn't want to hear about that stuff. I was into my story, and the story, you know how your list pops up? As soon as you start feeling a grievance towards someone, everything they've ever done, it's like that, pops up. And you have a list. These are all the things that she or he always does. They do the gut, everybody. You know that list that pops up? And there it is, and I'm standing there going, <clears throat> 
If you notice, mm -hmm, I am not using any cream cheese this morning because I got the lecture yesterday about the cream cheese. How about I use twice the amount every other day and then I'll use the same amount of cream cheese by the end of the week. Would that be okay for you? Would you just stay with the fried eggs and the grits? I'll deal with the cream cheese. Thank you. And all of this happens within 18 seconds. And the toast has not even popped up yet. But I'm all over this. And then a voice says to me, stop. Recalculating. Notice how you're feeling right now. How are you feeling right now? You are about to open your mouth and ruin the whole day. And if you start the day that way, if you go down that path by doing that, you know it's going to get real hard to get back on track again, right? It's going to take a whole lot of recalculation. So I just sort of, I breathe it in and I breathe it out. This is just a squeeze of cream cheese. Somebody stop me. Relax. Let it go. And I just let it pass. It doesn't last long, but it's so crucial to catch it early in the day. And so all of a sudden the toaster, boom, it popped up. I put on the butter, not the cream cheese. And we sat down and we said a prayer over breakfast and I realized that I had just dodged a really big bullet early in the day. I caught it and it's, you look at it and you say, well, this is not very complicated. Well, what's, I want something deep and esoteric. Try living this stuff every day. When your mind does what it does, when small mind takes over and goes, come on, be right on this one. Let's go down this path. And another part of you knows it's not going to lead to anything. It's not going to go anywhere. It's just going to be another dead end and a whole lot of apologizing for a whole bunch of stuff you probably say that you really wished you hadn't. This particular article for GPS for the Mind comes from a woman named Sylvia Bornstein. Do you know Sylvia, Born Sylvia Bornstein? She's a Vipassana meditation teacher. She's been teaching for like as long as we've been at this, 40 years. And she's really well known in the Vipassana community. She's a VIP in the movement. And she's Jewish and she's very funny. And she's done these retreats led hundreds of people through 10, 20, 30 day retreats. So she's in New York and she's leaving her house, very cold day, and she's walking down the street to go to meet her friend at a Broadway play just down the street. And she realizes that she's, she's forgotten her gloves. It's really cold outside. So you know New York, there's a vendor to sell you anything. It's always there. So the vendor is there and she's standing there and she's waiting, she's just waiting to get a pair of gloves, and, and there's a guy behind her, and he's kind of bearing in on it a little bit, so the vendor says, hey buddy, back off! Back off, you in New York, hey buddy, back off! I used to live there, I know that really well. And the guy says, I'm not doing anything, I'm just watching the old lady dancing. Watching the old lady dancing. And she said she just started to cry. She had, had bought this brand new outfit, but she thought she looked marvelous in. She left the house and said, you've never looked better. And she's walking down the road. And someone says, I'm just watching the old lady dancing. And immediately she veers off and goes down that road of guilt, shame, and blame, and not feeling good enough. Anybody relate to that? In that moment, she's not having any fun anymore. She's just going down that road that leads to nowhere. And then she says, this is literally going to ruin the whole night. I don't even want to go to the stupid play and I feel terrible and this is awful. I just want to go home and cry and go underneath the covers. And a little voice says, Sylvia, stop. Nothing is ruining this day but you. You've already had the incident. It's over. It's happened. It's done, Sylvia. What's ruining it is the path you're going down. Stop. Receive recalibration from on high. And she did. And she started to laugh at herself. She stood back from her current situation. That's what a GPS device does. It pulls you out of your current drama and lets you see what's really going on. So you can make a different choice and get back on wholesome states of mind that lead to oneness, and connection rather than unwholesome states of mind that lead to separation, fear, and disconnection. By the way, that's the only choice we ever have.
wholesome or unwholesome. It's our choice. We make it every day. The path you go down is your very own choice. And she started to laugh. And she said, looking at it from the big picture, and when you look at your life from the big picture, you have to laugh at the things you get caught up in. She said, well, the truth is, I am an old lady. <laughs> I, I was an old lady dancing. I looked like I was dancing. I, I did forget my gloves. And really, it's quite funny. The next day, you know how God gives you the lesson you most need to learn. I had just written that talk on Thursday and Friday I'm at the office and somebody comes out of the book club and someone says, hey, Richard, 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 I saw your picture on Facebook. And now this particular picture on Facebook, Maureen's Facebook page, I put on because I'm not on there and I wanted a picture of me. So I picked out one that I thought was a great picture. And she says, <laughs> I want to know who's Who's the old Jewish guy on Maureen's Facebook page? Who's the old Jewish guy on Maureen's Facebook page? Who is the old Jewish guy? What old Jewish guy are you talking about? The same thing that happened to Sylvia happened to me. The same thing. Let's face it, folks. I'm getting older too. It's happening. Gonna be 64 in a couple of months here. It's happening. Hello. Welcome to the Facebook page of Incarnation in a Body. See it from the bigger perspective. Who are you really? Who are you really? What are you here for? And I laughed very quickly, very soon, at myself for the same thing that I had looked at for another's lesson. Turned out to be who's? My very own. This happens to us dozens of times a day. We make choices, and we're given the moment-by-moment -moment opportunity to call on our higher wisdom. In the Bible, biblically, when a character would be in their own unwholesome state of consciousness, the way in which they would reconnect with their higher self was to just stop for a moment and say, Here I am, Lord. Here I am. Say that with me. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. I'm here. This is where I'm at. I'm right here. I'm going to stop going down this road that leads to nowhere. And I'm going to ask for you to guide me. Now, I'm going to listen to what your voice says to recalculate the path that I'm going on so I can stay in a wholesome state of mind. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. Right here, right now. I'm off my position, and I can hear what's going on. This particular piece of uh, uh, photo here comes actually from the uh, wonderful article on GPS of the mind. Now here you are, now you wake up in the morning, and the first thing you do is you, you make your bed and tuck in your sheets, for those who like to, and then you sit on your cushion and you meditate, and you're together. You've got it together. You're ready for the day, right? You're ready to stay on a wholesome track. And then you go outside and meet your world. But there are many things that happen, many corners and turns and twists that you can take. Everyone who's in the body faces these streets, these decisions. Anger Street, my favorite. Obsessing Boulevard. <laughs> Lament Lane, okay? And there's Impulse Drive. Oh, I decided I would stay on my diet today, and what, what, here I am eating donuts at Dunkin' Donuts. Why, well, I, I wasn't gonna do that today, but here I am, Impulse Drive. Or, Fixation Avenue. I told you to fix that and you haven't fixed it. Why isn't it done yet? Anyone relate to that? Fixation Boulevard. And then there's Distress Avenue. Oh, I'm so distressed and depressed. And all these different ways in which we can get off track. And the way we get back on track is simply to take note of where we're moving towards. Because if we keep heading in that direction, we're going to end up there. And we call on the presence. Here I am, Lord. Use me. I'm willing in this moment to get off this way of being in the world and come back to my center where God is and I am and I can stay awake. And you will be with me always. God is with us always. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. It leadeth me beside green pastures and restoreth my soul. And yea, though I walk through the enemies of my own mind, thou art with me, thy rod, thy staff. Thy inst the instructions come right to me in the language I most need to hear it from. And it happens to each one of us every single day. And we're opening up to it 
more and more every day. Let's look at a lesson I mentioned for a moment. So, how to activate your internal GPS. That is your God present spiritual connection, or God is a present spiritual friend. I like that idea. I like to call God my best friend. He's my spiritual, she is, it is, my spiritual friend. It's always with me. It's only a second away. I changed my mind from going down the road of fear and blame and guilt and shame, and just for a moment, stop. It's there. Do you feel it? Right now, it's here. It's everywhere. It's all around us, emanating from within us. So stop. Acknowledge you're in distress. I'm in pain and I'm feeling frustrated, or I'm not feeling good enough. Just acknowledge it. There it is. That's what this is, the feeling. Because you see, there's a space between having the feeling of something and about to moment and the actual action that you take. There is a space between you. You have the feeling. I'm feeling distressed, I'm feeling anger, or don't tell me how to do the toast. I'll do the toast. <laughs> Don't tell me I'm getting old, I'm not getting old, I just got asked for proof four years ago, well five years ago, well six years ago, well ten years ago. You know how that is? It's just you watch the space increase between when you have the feeling and when you take the action. All of our practices allow us to create a bigger space to not get caught and make a different decision. And then your about to moment can become an about face moment. I don't really need to go that way. And it's so hard to do, and it's so easy when you actually do it. When you're encountering that kind of difficulty, you see it coming, you're about to say it, to do it, to act and react from it, and you don't. You go, I'm gonna go this way. And you go, oh, that was so easy. <laughs> Dodge another bullet. Two, recalculate. Take several deep breaths to maintain balance. Repeat, here I am, Lord, here I am. I am present and ready in this moment to receive calculation, recalculation from on high. Three, notice. Notice how after stopping and recalculating, your small mind self reconnects with your larger self. It's like being lifted up and having a viewpoint that sees everything in front of you, sees your whole lifetime, and makes a choice from a big mind perspective in this awakened state. Then other possible routes are given to you which way to go, which way not to go. And finally, when you stay on Wholesome Street, we're on the main street to happiness, joy, and completeness. And I got this morning as I was going over this. So remember to be open to receive the guidance that is always being offered and given to us. Remember, God is my ever-present spiritual friend. Say that with me. God is my ever-present spiritual friend. The friend goes with you wherever you go. He wants to help you in a very direct and very personal way just for you. No matter where we travel, we are never alone. Wherever we are, God is. Let's say that together. No matter where we travel, we are never alone. Wherever we are, God is. Right back on the path again. Don't be afraid to call on that help. It's ever present and available for you, right here and right now. And when you stay as close as you can to Wholesome Boulevard, which is to your spinal column running up right down here, and don't get off and, and distractions, you will find that what you need and where you need to go and what you need to do will be given to you in very specific ways. Practice well today. It isn't just for yourself, but for the benefit of all beings, who share the highways and byways of life with you. Namaste. Namaste.